Okay, so uh, students, how many students? Welcome. <laughs> how many uh, professionals? Speech? Psychology? Something else? <laughs> okay, good. Well, welcome. So we're going to be covering neuroscience today, um, especially as it applies to autism, attentional disorders, dyslexia, and other learning challenges. Okay, we're going to start with just the newest research in these three areas. Autism, attentional disorders, and dyslexia. Nationwide and worldwide, oops, we have now worldwide one in 68 children в света сега има едно на 68 деца are born um, now with a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder които сега са родени с диагнозата разстройство от спектъра на аутизма these are 8 year olds това са деца на 8 години i think bulgaria may be slightly less мисля че в българия може да е малко по нисък този процес you eat better <laughs> Don't do so many stupid things. Okay. Uh, but where we're going to be going to is that it is a quite variable disorder. For most of you in your whole careers, you won't see two children that are alike. За повечето от вас в цялата ви кариера няма да видите две еднакви деца. They may have similarities. Те могат да са подобни. Um, they may have behaviors that are repetitive. Могат да имат повторяеми поведения. Problems with language. Проблеми с езика. Especially social communication. Особено с социалната комуникация. But some will be brilliant Musicians. Но някои ще бъдат блестящи музиканти. Some will be brilliant artists. Някои ще са блестящи художници, артисти, творци. And some will be designing all of these things for us. Някои ще създават всички тези неща за нас. So we're here to focus on the language, especially. Ние тук сме за сме за да се фокусираме специално върху езика. The other thing about it, and the reason it's so variable, друго нещо, което искам да кажа, причината за що има толкова много различия, is it's polygenetic. Е тази полигенетичност. And what that means is um, that there are thousands of genes. Какво означава това, че има хиляди гени? Right now, there's an organization called Safari. You can you can get the link. S S F A R I Точно сега има една организация, която се нарича Safari, може да получите линк за нея. .com .com and that will tell you how many genes have been identified. И там можете да видите колко гени са били идентифицирани. Right now we're at over 2000. Точно сега сме на над 2000 гени. Any one child will have maybe five or six of those. So that's why it is so different from one child to the next. Eventually what the goal of neuroscience and is and neurogenetics really в последствие това което е целта на невронуката и неврогенетиката is to find the susceptibility genes е да се намерят тези гени които са свързани с податливостта to look at we're going to look at this in a minute but um, look at the 
genetic mutations. За да се разгледат генетичните мутации. Um, and then what we want to do is look oops, what happened there? Oh, I touched it probably. <laughs> okay. Um, look at these kinds of mutations here. И след това да разгледаме тези мутации тук. These are individual mutations in Don't touch. Okay. These are individual mutations in genes. Това са индивидуалните мутации на гени. Which I'll explain. And then genetic syndromes. И след това генетичните синдроми. One genetic syndrome that you may have seen or may have heard about where children are autistic. Генетичен синдром, който може да сте видяли или за който да сте чули, когато децата са аутистични. Is Rett's disorder. Това е разстройство на Rett's. Yeah. One gene in that case causes it. Ген го причинява. And it's in little girls. И това се случва при малките момиченца. They start out perfectly typical. Те започват съвсем типични. And then their language skills decrease. И след това има увреждане на уменията им за говорене. So that's a little different. Това е малко по-различно. But the the eventual goal and where we'll spend time this morning. No, нашата цел и там къде то ще се фокусираме тази сутрин. Is to figure out which gene does what. Е да разберем кой ген какво прави. And that helps us as therapists. И това ни помага като терапевти. To know what to work on with each child. Да знаем върху какво да работим при всяко дете. As well as to anticipate what a child might need along the way. Също и да можем да прогнозираме от какво може да се нуждае детето от тук нататък. So what do we know now? Какво знаем сега? How does genetic affect brain maturation and brain function? Как генетиката влияе на мозъчните функции и мозъчното съзряване? So what you know is DNA. Това което знаете, ДНК is the recipe, if you will. Е рецептата, ако искате да кажете така that the body uses to develop. Която тялото използва за да се развива. How many are cooks? Колко от вас готвят? Okay. So you have a recipe. Те че имате една рецепта for a wonderful meal. За чудесна храна. And you decide tomorrow и вие решавате утре to add a little more sugar да прибавите малко повече захар. And a little less salt. И малко по-малко сол. Okay? You change the recipe. Променяте рецептата. Will the meal still be the same? Дали ястието ще е същото? Yeah. Да. But it'll be slightly different. Но ще е малко по-различно. And that's the same thing with DNA. И това е същото с ДНК-то. The small parts of the DNA, the gene, тези малки части от гена в ДНК-то, can change just a little bit. Могат малко да се променят. You'll still be who you are. И пак ще сте тези които сте. But you'll be just a little different. Но ще малко ще сте малко по-различни. And that's what we're studying in autism. И това е нещо което изследваме при аутизма. So We're looking at these genes. Тъй че разглеждаме тези гени. And how they drive the brain to change. И как те карат мозъка да се променя. And the might be, I mean you can add if in your recipe you can add salt and sugar or a little more meat. Може да прибавите захар или сол или малко повече месо. In the brain we can add We can change the chemicals. А пък в мозъка ние можем да променяме химикалите. We can change the hormones. Можем да променяме хормоните. We can change how the cells fire. И можем да променяме как клетките се свързват. So here is RNA. А това е РНК. And RNA is the book that has all of your recipes in it. Uh, RNK, това е uh, книгата, готварската книга с всички рецепти. 
So the dogma, we say, is DNA codes for RNA. And then that codes for the way your brain matures or or works. One key is protein. Един ключ това са протеините. Because this these are all amino acids and protein. Защото това всичко са аминокиселини и протеини. And so protein structure then is what drives this recipe to create a human brain or liver or stomach or skin. И протеиновата структура всъщност прави така, че тази рецепта да създава човешкия мозък или черен дроб или стомах или кожа. Now, just to give you an idea how complicated this is. За да ви дам идея колко сложно е това. How many of you have seen a child with autism? Колко от вас са виждали дете с аутизъм? Who let's say has repetitive behaviors. Което има повторяемо поведение. But also problems metabolizing certain kinds of food. Но също проблеми с метаболизма на определени видове храни. That may be the same gene. Това може да е един и същи ген. So so one gene doesn't just do one thing. Тъй че един ген не прави само едно нещо. Just like a recipe doesn't just do one thing. Както рецептата не прави само едно нещо. A recipe covers sugar and salt and meat and flour. Рецептата включва захар, сол, месо, брашно. And if you change one of those, ако промените една от тези съставки, you can change the texture of what you eat. Може да промените текстурата на това, което ядете. And the flavor. И вкуса. And even the how filling it is. И също така колко ви засища. So genes code for lots of things. Те че гените кодират за много неща. That's what makes this such a interesting but complex area. Това прави тази област толкова интересна, но сложна. So this is the human genome. Това е човешкия геном. We have 22 genes. Имаме 22 гена. And we have two sex-linked genes. И имаме два гени свързани с пола. Okay. Each gene has around a, a each chromosome, sorry. Всеки хромозом has around 1000 genes. Има около 1000 гени. So we have 22000 genes. Тъй че ние имаме 22000 гена. If there are 2000 genes, ако има 2000 гена, that have now been identified as associated with autism, които сега са открити че са свързани с аутизма, that's 10% of the genes. Това са 10% от гените. Each of those red and green dots that I can't touch, всички тези червени и зелени точки, които не мога да докосна, is a gene on a chromosome. Всичко това е ген върху хромозом. That's been identified um, as affecting or possibly involved with autism. Е идентифициран като ген, който е влияе или е въвлечен в аутизм. And again, any one child might have one here, one here, one there, one there, one there. И всяко дете може да ги има на различни места. And then another child might have one there, there, three there, and two there. А под друго дете на различни места от при първото дете. Hence why they're so different. И за това те са толкова различни. So when a gene is changed, когато един ген се промени, we call that an allele. Наричаме това алели. An allele then is a mutation. Алелите това са мутации. Um, where there's been a mistake or a change. Където има грешка или промяна. Your genes are dividing all the your sorry, your cells are dividing all the time. Вашите клетки се делят през цялото време. Skin cells. Клетките на кожата flake off all the time. Те постоянно падат. And every time a skin cell flakes off, 
И всеки път, когато падне една клетка от кожата, a new cell has been born. се родила нова клетка. And that cell has all of your genes in it. И тази клетка съдържа всичките ви гени. So mistakes can happen. Тъй, че могат да се случат грешки. And this is a good paper for you. И това тук е една добра статия. Uh, that summarizes a, a, most of what we understand about this right now. Която обобщава повечето от това, което разбираме за това в момента. It's a little old, it's three years old. Малко е стара на три години. In neuroscience, that's like 200 years old. В невронуката това е като да е на 200 години. But it's a good way to get started. Но това е добро начало. Okay. And what it, it explains to you и какво ви обяснява тя? Is these, how these mutations occur. Как се появяват тези мутации? So, when the gene duplicates, когато гена се, се отвоява, it can add a section, може да добавя част, can add just one letter, да се добави просто една буква, one letter, една буква can be switched or added. Може да бъде сменена или добавена. These letters are proteins. Тези букви са протеини. So it can be added. Тъй, че това може да бъде добавено. It can be deleted. Изтрито. Um, it can just be altered. Или сменено. Maybe this one becomes C G U instead of G C U. Може би това става C G U вместо C U G. This is called a point mutation. Това се нарича точкова мутация. Because one little change was occurred at one point. Защото една малка промяна се появява в една точка. On the gene. В гена. So how does this work in autism? Как работи това при аутизма? Some of the genes in autism, някои от гените в аутизма, are inherited by a, from the parent, from a parent. Са наследени от родител. But not very many. Но не много от тях. The vast, even identical twins, дори едноячните близнаци who have exactly the same genome, don't always both have autism. Now, they're more likely to have autism if one does than, let's say, a cousin or an aunt. But that's a small part of what happens with autism. Но това е малка част от това, което се случва в аутизма. The other changes, другите промени, are called de novo mutations. Се наричат de novo мутации. De novo, de novo, which means brand new. Което означава чисто нови. Just a little mistake. Просто малка грешка. Okay? Now mutations are not bad. Мутациите не са нещо лошо. Mutations are how humans evolve. Мутациите са начинът по който хората се развиват. So all of you, I think, тъй че всички вие мисля, I've uh, talked to Danny over here about this, are used to being cold. <laughs> In winter, right? Okay, and you don't mind being cold. Сте свикнали с студа през зимата и нямате против. I hate cold. Аз мразя студа. I go to Florida in the winter. През зимата аз отивам в Флорида. Palm trees. Там има палми. My gene must be different than yours. А моя ген трябва да е различен от вашия. So you've adapted one way. Ти че вие се адаптирате по един начин. And I've adapted another. А аз се адаптирам по друг начин. And that's because we can mutate. That's because our our genetic code can mutate. Това е защото можем да мутираме в генетичния код. So what are what do we know now? Какво знаем сега? Well the new research is suggesting that some genes 
may affect the way the brain matures. Новите изследвания казват, че някои гени могат да влияят на съзряването на мозъка. And some of those effects и някои от тези въздействия is in the brain you have short connections, I'll explain in a minute, but short connections. За това, че в мозъка има кратки връзки and long highway systems. И дълги магистрални системи. Many children with autism spectrum много деца от аутистичния спектър don't, the long highway systems don't mature as well. Техните дълги системи, които приличат на магистрали, не съзряват. But the short connections добре, но късите връзки proliferate. Те пролиферират, те се разпространяват много. So the child has hundreds of things going on in their head at one time. Тъй, че детето има стотици неща, които му се случват в главата в даден момент. And they're worried about lots of things. И се тревожи за много нещо. And they're highly sensitive to touch. И са много чувствителни на докосване. Because those are short connections. Защото това са къси връзки. Sound is very, they're sensitive to sound. Те са много чувствителни към звук. Because those are short connections. Понеже това са къси връзки. Even things they see. Дори неща, които виждат. They might want to close out. Може да искат да не ги виждат. Because those are short connections. But the long connections link that. No, дългите връзки. Links what you feel. Свързват това което чувстваш. With what you see. С това което виждаш. With what you hear. С това което чуваш. So you can be in this class and learn. Така че да можете да сте в тази зала. And if if I walk around. Ако аз се движа. And tap your shoulder. Might be a little annoying. But that won't throw you way off. If you were on the spectrum and I came up and did this, because that would overwhelm you. And if you're overwhelmed all the time, it's it's very hard. Your 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 brain is focusing on these. On these sensations, е много трудно, защото мозъка ви се фокусира върху тези усещания. And it's not allowing you to link information for things like talking and and looking at other people. Не ви позволява да свързвате информация за неща като говорене, виждане на други хора. So, so that's one thing we know. And another thing we know is that some genes. Това е едно от нещата, които знаем. Друго нещо е, че някои гени може да се случи така, че в една част от мозъка да съзрява по-бавно. И това може да повлияе на много неща. Така да гледаме този един ген, нека да разгледаме този един ген, One out of two thousand. Един от две хиляди гена. But what it affects is sleep. Това върху което той въздейства е съня. And the ability to attend to one thing. И способността да се внимава върху едно нещо. And ignore other things. И да се пренебрегват другите неща. And that's all it seems to do. И това е всичко, което ни се струва, че прави. Except if a child is isn't sleeping very well as a baby. Само че ако едно дете не спи много добре като бебе. And if the baby is attending to everything. И ако бебето обръща внимание на всичко. That creates anxiety. Това създава тревожност. Which leads to aggression. Което води до агресия. And problems learning. И проблеми с ученето. Now what does this mean? Какво значи това? Means that if I can identify that this is a gene a child's having trouble with when they're a week old. Това значи, че ако аз мога да открия, че с този ген има проблем детето, когато е на една седмица, I might be able to use different kinds of interventions мога да използвам различни видове интервенции to improve sleep за да подобря съня and attention и вниманието And the child may never develop language or aggression problems. И детето може никога да не развие проблеми с езика или с агресията. That's the hope. Това е надеждата. That's why we're looking at this. За това разглеждаме това. 
This is a guide for you, all of you. Това е насока за всички вас. Of the early signs of autism. За най-ранните знаци за аутизъм. We in my clinic we and at Northwestern we print this up on big plastic pieces of paper like this. В моята клиника и университет ние ламинираме на лист хартия това. And take it to schools. И го носим в училищата. And give it out to anyone we can. И го раздаваме на който можем. So parents can recognize signs very early. За да може родителите много рано да разпознаят знаците. Because the earlier we can recognize problems, защото колкото по-рано можем да разпознаем проблемите, the more likely we can prevent the ramifications of those. Толкова по-вероятно е да можем да предотвратяваме последствията. So a lot of university research is aimed at getting children very early, as early as possible. And it doesn't mean we diagnose a child as autistic at two. Не значи, че когато детето е на две, ние му даваме диагноз за аутизъм. It means we just identify children at risk. Ние просто идентифицираме децата, които са в риск. So, the takeaways, тъй, че ключовите моменти, the more we understand autism, колкото повече разбираме аутизма, the more complex it becomes. Толкова по-сложно става. So, beware, тъй, че внимавайте, of anyone, за всеки, who says, който казва, this cures autism! Това лекува аутизма. Or this will really help your child, I promise. Или това наистина ще помогне на детето ти. No. Не. It might help one child. Може да помогне на едно дете. Out of thousands. От хиляди деца. What they will tell you. Това което ще ви кажат. Is look at my child is better. Погледни моето дете е по-добре. Because I had him swing from the ceiling. Защото опуснах една люлка от тавана. And eat only garbanzo beans. И то се лулеше и след това му дадах този вид храни. Maybe he is better, but that doesn't mean anyone else would be. Does that make sense? От това може да стане по-добре, но това не значи, че е валидно за всеки. So there isn't going to be one cure. Тъй, че няма да има един лек. And the better we get at identifying these risk factors and the genetic differences of a child early, the more we can target our therapies in a way that will help the child по начин, който може да помогне на детето. And not waste time. И да не се губи време. Or money. Или пари. Okay. Early identification. Ранно откриване. And neuroscience-based interventions. И интервенции, основани на невронауката. The combination. Комбинацията от двете. Are essential. Е същностно важна. Okay, so... There are neuroscience-based interventions we'll show you a little research on. Има интервенции базирани на невронуката. Ще ви покажем кратко изследване. But I want you to understand that none of this, we're not talking about cures. Но тук не говорим за излекуване. And we're talking about interventions that work with говорим за интервенции, които работят заедно с other interventions. Други интервенции. These children require a combination of тези деца се нуждаят от комбинация. How early can this identification be made? You said that a child that is one week old, you can... Yeah, there's new research. Има нови изследвания. Right now, we need longitudinal research to support it, but that... In the U.S., I don't know about Bulgaria. We do what's called newborn hearing screening. We do what's called newborn hearing screening. 
Ние правим нещо, което е изследване на слуха на новороденото. On that screening, и при това изследване, children who were followed for four years, деца, които са проследявани за 4 години, who eventually were identified as having autism, които впоследствие биват идентифицирани като имащи аутизъм, were seen during the hearing screening, се виждат по време на този скрининг на слуха, to have a slower response to sound than neurotypical babies, neurotypical children. What does that mean, slower response to sound? Billy! What, Mom? Just slight delay. Просто едно малко закъснение. And if that pans out, и ако това се удължи, as, let's say, accounting for even 20 or 30 percent of children with autism, ако става въпрос за 20 и 30 процента от децата с аутизъм, as early as a week of age, и ако може да се хване толкова рано, колкото при едноседмично бебе, we could start doing interventions можем да започнем да правим интервенции to speed up за да ускорим the auditory response слуховия отклик at the level of the brain stem на нивото на мозъчния ствол that's where the research is going one day old изследване на един ден we're not there though все още не сме там but people are working on it, and I'll, I'll show you some of that research. Okay, so essentially, let's start with this research. This is a paper now that is nine years old. Um, and this preceded that, that finding of, a, of delayed response to sound. И това е преди откриването на този тази забавена реакция към звук. Um in 2010 is when it first came out. За първи път излезе през 2010. Um and what they found, I'm going to go here and come back. И това което са открили, ще дойда тук и ще се върна. is that they already were seeing this in older in older children on the spectrum. They were just seeing that children on the autism spectrum at the brain stem cerebrum brain stem so the auditory nerve connects first in the brain stem слуховия нерв първо се свързва в мозъчния ствол. And then the cerebrum. И след това мозъчната кора. The difference was just a tiny delay. Already they had seen that. е съвсем малко закъснение. In their ability to track sound. В способността да се проследява звука. Okay? And so that little delay и това малко закъснение can be profound. Може да бъде много значимо. And and, and that's because the speech people know consonants in a language are very, very rapid. And this sound, not pa, because that is a vowel, Не па, защото but, това добави и гласна, а предното това е само съгласната. 40 миллисекундс лонг. 40 милисекунди дължина. 40 thousands of a second long. 40 хилядни от секундата. If I have a 70 or 80 миллисекунд delay, ако аз имам 70 или 80 милисекунди закъснение, and I say pop, и кажа pop, pot, Pot? <laughs> it's hard to do that. <laughs> okay, pop, pot, Paul. I can't hear that change because the vowel is too long 
and it obscures that tiny little consonant because I have delayed response to sound. Does that make sense? It's even more exaggerated if there's noise. The noise masks the sound. So I'm going to do that to you. I'm going to give you this, it's not exactly the same, but I'm going to mask the fidelity of my speech a minute. And we'll She's too good. And so what happened with the children on the spectrum in this study is that when you looked at their ability to track their hearing, da! Когато вие гледате каква е способността за проследяване, те чуват това. This is an electrophysiological response. Това е електрофизиологичен отклик. Called evoked brainstem response. Това е провокиран отклик на мозъчния ствол. They just have little electrodes on their head. Има малки електроди, които слагат на главата. And we're looking at the brainstem's ability to track that sound. И ние виждаме каква е способността на мозъчния ствол да проследява този звук. Okay? Um, and this is a neurotypical child, a control. И това е дете, което има обичайни реакции от контролната група. And their brain stem tracks that da pretty well. И по този начин мозъчния ствол на това дете проследява доста добре звука. But children on the autism spectrum this is what they're hearing they get a totally distorted signal not at the ear at the brainstem if it's distorted here it will be distorted up here after just a little bit of auditory training, they, they were able to track the sound at that level as well as the controls. Now, does that cure them? No, but it improves their ability to learn language. And so when we see them go through some of these interventions и когато ги виждаме да минават през някои от тези интервенции we see just working on that auditory processing and then some other skills like working memory and neuroscience based intervention виждаме че просто работата върху тази слухова преработка както и други интервенции базирани на невронауката after about a year of the intervention, one year, their receptive language, this is normal, improved almost to the normal level overall. Their expressive language didn't improve quite as much не се е подобрил толкова, но все пак се е подобрил. И способността на детето да слуша да слуша шума, а всъщност минава над нормалното ниво. Това е начало. Но ще Still, and I want to go back to this, need speech therapy 
to, to build the language skills. За могат да се изграждат тези езикови умения. It isn't enough just to put a child onto a computer. Не е достатъчно просто да сложиш детето пред компютъра. We need intensive speech and language therapy. Нас ни трябва интензивна терапия, която се фокусира върху речта, говора, езика. So the child can make up for the three or four or five years that they couldn't hear in a typical way. Така че детето може да навакса това, което не е могло да чуе. That makes sense. Разбирате ли? Now there are other problems too that these children have. Sorry. There are other issues that these children have. Има и други проблеми, които имат тези деца. Behavior. Поведение. Attention. Внимание. Um, other cognitive effects. Други когнитивни последствия. And another kind of therapy we know because of strong research is very helpful, especially when children are young, is applied behavioral therapy. Okay. Okay, now behavior improves Поведението се подобрява if language improves ако езика се подобрява. So if you combine applied behavioral analysis, ABA тъй, че ако вие комбинирате with speech therapy анализ с говорна терапия and neuroscience therapy и терапия базирана на невронуката. These children had all three тези деца са получили и трите a hundred of them, with 34 professionals across the United States, what we saw was 81% improved in attentional skills after about a year след около година of these three therapies combined. От тези три съчетани терапии. Um, and we saw 83% и наблюдаваме 83% when we ask teachers подобряване, когато запитваме учителите to evaluate the child's language skills когато искаме от учителите да оценят езиковите умения на децата, 83% there was a significant change. 83% подобрение е значително подобрение. In their response time, в времето за реакция, in listening, при слушането, their ability to follow directions, в способността да следват указания, their ability to understand humor, да разбират хумор, overall comprehension, в цялостното разбиране, and new vocabulary, length of sentences, etc. But did it help every single child? Even with those three, 16% of the child was still struggling. So it didn't mean they... they got any worse but it wasn't it wasn't quite enough. And in that case what we need is probably more intensive speech language therapy. So let's go now to attentional disorders. Нека сега да погледнем разстройствата на вниманието. We went we're starting with hard <laughs> most complex. And now we're going to fine-tune to different, different capacities important for learning. This is where we, what we do now. This is a year-old research. 
Това е изследване на година. Well, actually two now. January 2017. Вече две години, защото 2017 януари. That's only 200 years old in neuroscience. Това е само на 200 години според невронуката. But what researchers are trying to understand is this issue of attention. Това, което изследователите се опитват да разберат е този проблем с вниманието. And is it, is it a isolated problem дали това е изолиран проблем or is it related to other issues of learning или е свързан с други проблеми на ученето so i'm going to walk in now i'm going to go to the door and walk in and i'm going to be a child сега ще отида до вратата и след това might recognize ще изляза тук и ще съм дете което може би познават so i come into your room влизам в залата Oh, look, pretty, pretty. Can I? Oh, 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 look. Oh, oh, what's that? Oh, play. Oh, 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 good, 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 good. Oh, look, look, look. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh, I'm walking on the line. Аз вървя по линията. Do you know any child like that? Познавате ли такова дете? There's a word for that. Има дума за това. It's open attention. Това е отворено внимание. Babies have open attention. Бебетата имат отворено внимание. But over time, но с времето, they learn to focus their attention. Те се учат да фокусират вниманието си. On just a few things at a time. Върху само няколко неща. Now, how does that work? Well, they have to know what's important to pay attention to. And they have to be able to hold that in mind. And not be distracted by other things. And that ability to hold things in mind and paying attention are linked like this. So that student, if they can hold things in mind now, comes in and says, I'm at school. There's my desk. I will go. I'm ready. That's a very different child, isn't it? What made the difference? They knew where they were. They knew where their desk was. They knew what was expected of them. They could hold that all in mind when they walked around. So they weren't distracted. And they also remember coats and they don't have to count them anymore. Okay? Okay. So we call this working memory. And it turns out that working memory builds when a child expects or predicts a reward. And that when they expect, they have lots of choices when I walked in like that, I had lots of choices. But I, I expected that when I sat down and told the teacher I was ready, the teacher would say, good job. And so I was able to predict that I would be rewarded for ignoring lots of things. And as long as it had value, then I could focus my attention. And over time, what happens is that attention improves based on how much value I associate се подобрява въз основа на това колко ценност аз се свързвам или прогнозирам от моето поведение. 
И след това in the brain това, което се изгражда в мозъка is two important parts of the brain. Това са две важни части в мозъка. The part of the brain that helps me to learn тази, meaning and language тази част от мозъка, която ми помага да се науча, да уча език и значение and the part of the brain that helps me to determine what to pay attention to and what to ignore. И тази част, която ми помага да определя на какво да обърна внимание и какво да пренебрегна. When these work together, когато те работят заедно, they this becomes more activated. Тогава това става по-активирано. The cortex gets actually thicker. Кортекса всъщност се отдебелява. It's able to make more connections. И може да прави повече връзки. And this is a long range connection. А пък това е една връзка с голям дълъг обхват. This connection is this long. Толкова дълга е тази връзка. It's a long fiber track. Тъй, че това е дълъг път. And that builds working memory. И това изгражда работна памет. The two work together. И двете работят заедно. Working memory. Работна памет. And attention. И внимание. Okay. Now we're going to give you an attention test. Are you ready? Сега ще ви направим един тест за внимание. This is a classic test called the Stroop. Това е Stroop тест, който е класически. Okay. And this isn't the real Stroop test. Това не е истинският тест на Stroop. The psychologists in the room would not be happy with me if I brought the real Stroop test. Психолозите няма да се радват тук, ако донесе истинският Stroop тест. So this is the Burns version. Тъй, че това е версията на Burns. But it's a test of can you ignore distractions. Това е тест за това. Можете ли да пренебрегнете разсейващи фактори? Now, the first part of the test, you don't have much difference distraction to ignore except people next to you and things like that. But I just want you to go through and name the color with me. I'll point and you name. Are you ready? You have to work. <laughs> okay, I'm teasing. All right. Pretty easy. You could go pretty fast. The people make mistakes. No, some of you said, hey, look, you're, you're getting paid to be here. I'm not. I, you just talk. Okay. Now we're going to do the test that tests attention. Are you ready? Same thing. Name the color. Ignore the word. This is, this is why it's a test of response inhibition, because you have to ignore one part of this, right? Okay, here we go. Whoops. Here we go. You didn't know, learn your colors? You didn't even have to read, guys. What happened? You slowed down. And you made mistakes. And some of you just said, I'm not doing it. We have a word for that. In psychology. It's called impersistence. Okay. What we tack, what we were looking at then was your your ability to ignore distractions. In order to be able to ignore distractions, we need this part of our brain. That's the part that's very important for working memory, believe it or not. This is an attentional part of your brain. It's very important for rewards. So you pay attention if you expect a reward or some value. 
And this, this enables us to work top down това ни помага да работим отгоре надолу to be motivated to attend. За да бъдем мотивирани да обръщаме внимание. This research comes out of by the way a project called the Human Connectome project. Това е изследване което идва от проект който се нарича проекта на човешкия конектом. Connectome. And this is another aspect of attention. И това е друг аспект на вниманието. And this you can see the importance of working memory. И тук можете да видите важността на работната памет. So we know that these these networks in the brain. Те че ние знаем че тези мрежи в мозъка are important for something just as simple as attention. Са важни за нещо толкова просто като вниманието. And there are lots of networks. Има много мрежи. And they have long fiber tracks. И те имат дълги проводни пътища. So I can't work one part of the brain. Аз не мога да работя с една част от мозъка. Because I've got to work parts of the brain together. Аз трябва да работя с частите в мозъка заедно. This, these connectomes are like your cell phone network, your mobile phone network. Конектоми са като мрежата на мобилния телефон. And if the tower, we were in the mountains yesterday. Не вчера бяхме на планината. There was no cell phone, cell phone tower, right? Ако нямаше кула. This doesn't work. Тогава телефона нямаше да работи. Is this broken? Той е развален. Is my phone broken? Дали телефона ми е развален? Не. I just don't have the long range connection. Просто аз нямам връзката с дълги обхват. So what we've learned is that working with attentional disorders, тъй когато се работи с разстройства на вниманието, we don't want to fix the phone. Ние не е нужно да поправяме телефона. We can. Можем. If it's broken. Ако е щупен. But what we really want to do is work the system top down. Но това което искаме да правим е да работим в системата отгоре надолу. Fix the tower first. Първо предавателната кула да се Make sure the tower is functioning. Да работи кулата. And then if your phone isn't the newest. И след това ако телефона ви не е най-новия. If it doesn't have the fastest processing speed. Ако няма най-бързата скорост на преработка. You can override it. Можете да поправите това чрез това което е над телефона. So when we exercise working memory, тъй че когато ние упражняваме работната памет, backwards when we go backwards, когато се върнем назад, and we exercise working memory, и ние упражняваме работната памет, just exercises for working memory. Просто упражнения за работна памет. What we see is a huge change. Това което виждаме е огромна промяна. In attention. В вниманието. And that research is just starting to become available. И тези изследвания току-що започват да са на разположение. So we call this part of the brain. Ние наричаме тази част от мозъка. It has a name, dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Има име dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. Sorry. But that's responsible for Cognitive control. Това е отговорно за когнитивния контрол. Cognitive control is your ability to be purposeful. Когнитивният контрол е вашата способност да be goal oriented. Следвате цел, да сте ориентирани към цел. To focused. Да сте фокусирани. Focused on one thing and ignore all the other distractions that don't matter. Да сте фокусирани върху едно нещо и да пренебрегнете всички други разсеявания, които нямат значение. And what is goal oriented mean? А какво е целево ориентиран? You're sitting here. Вие седите тук. You came to listen to some crazy lady from the US. Дойдохте да слушате някаква луда жена от Штатите. You had to get here on time. Трябваше да дойдете на време. You had to change your schedule. Да си промените програмата. Why would you do that? Защо ви е това? Do you expect money from this? Дали ви плащат за това? That would be a reward. Това ще е награда. No, you expect knowledge. Вие очаквате познание. You expect to learn something new. Вие очаквате да научите нещо ново. And for you, that's rewarding. И за вас това е награда. You're addicted. 
Вие сте пристрастени to learning. към учене. Окей? Я, ще се я. Ай, ам. We love it. Обичаме това. That's our goal, isn't it? To get our children to be addicted to learning. Това е нашата цел да накараме децата ни да са пристрастени. Learning language. Към ученето на език. Learning new information. На нова информация. And we can build the capacity to learn. И можем да изграждаме капацитета за учене. If we do training, cognitive training, чрез когнитивно обучение, on things like working memory. Върху неща като работна памет. And we know this. И знаем това. Um, this was research on a neuroscience program. Това е изследване върху програма свързана с невронауката. It was done, it was a, a, a controlled independent study. И това е изследване, което е контролирано независимо. You want to pay attention to this person if you're interested in attention. Her name is Courtney Stevens. Ако се интересувате от внимание, е важно да обърнете внимание на този човек. And she's at the University of Oregon. И тя е от университета в Орегон. And she's trying to figure out how we can improve attentional skills. И тя се опитва да разбере как ние можем да подобрим without medication. Уменията за внимание без лекарства. So in this study, в това изследване, she had children, seven-year-olds, тя изследва деца на 7 години, listening to a story, които чуват една история, and looking at the pages of the book, и които гледат страниците на книгата, projected on a screen. Проектирани върху екран. No animation. Без анимация. So they're just listening. Само слушат. Okay. And they're, they have headphones on. Имат слушалки. And during the story, и по време на историята, periodically there is a word that doesn't belong. Периодично се появява дума, която не принадлежи. Or a beep. Beep! Или такъв бип. And what she's looking at is their brain response. И това, което тя разглежда, е реакцията на мозъка. And she's seeing, can they ignore? И тя вижда дали те могат да пренебрегнат. The mistake. Грешката. If it's a word. Ако е дума. And or a sound. И или звука. So what she's doing is measuring electrophysiologically. И това, което прави, е, че измерва електрофизиологично. Very objectively. Много обективно. How distractible the child is when they're listening to a story. Does that make sense? And they went through some exercises. Neuroscience exercises for just a short period of time in this case. They did uh, six weeks is all. Цялото е трябвало шест седмици. Of language, working memory exercises упражнения свързани с работната памет и езика but they did it 2 hours a day го правили по 2 часа на ден these were language these were language and reading impaired children това са деца които имат затруднения с езика и четенето 35 of them 35 от тях these are 35 children that don't have any language or reading issues а това са 35 деца без никакви проблеми с езика или четенето. And this is TD stands for typically neurotypical, typically developing. А това е деца, които са типично развиващи се. And this was white is before they went through this neuroscience intervention. И това е било преди интервенцията от невронауката. And the gray is after. И то е бялото, а след интервенцията е в сиво. Now it was language and working memory. Тъй, че става въпрос за упражнения, свързани с работна памет и език. And you can see that the language impaired children. И виждате, че децата с трудности с езика. After six weeks. След че седмици. Showed significant gains in their receptive language. Проявяват много значителни ползи при рецептивния език. The typically developing showed a little bit of change. You would expect them to two hours a day, five days a week. Типично развиващите се деца. But not huge. Показват не голяма промяна. But the 
kids that didn't go through it, the control group, and we really have two control groups here, were the same six weeks later. These children were just attending school. But then, and, and these are just the measures of language, huge changes in language impaired, Огромни промени при децата с езикови проблеми. Little bit of change in the typical developing children. Малко промяна при типично развиващите се деца. But no change in the children who didn't go through it. Без промяна при контролната група. But this is the attention score. This is their ability to ignore distractions. Но това са резултатите от внимание. Oh no, sorry. That, I'm not moving this. That's why that's happening. Okay, so this is the attention score. And you're looking, and remember, it's electrophysiological. Look at the change in the child's ability to attend. To, to and next time, you guys can give me a lesson in how to use a whiteboard. <laughs> uh, even the typically developing children paid much more attention. Дори типично развиващите се деца обръщат много повече внимание. And so we have some schools in the United States that are using this program with all second graders. Нима училища в щатите, които използват тази програма. Hey look, why not? За всички деца. Six weeks? Втори клас, шест седмици. But when you look at the at the amount of change, но ако погледнете количеството на промяната, the the largest change in attention occurred in the children with the problems. Най-голямата промяна в вниманието възниква при децата с проблеми. So, we now, that was early research. Това е ранно изследване. This came out three weeks ago. А това излиза преди три седмици. In published form, it was online last summer. Миналото лято това беше онлайн. And really what we're looking at is 5,100 children around the world. Това, което разглеждаме са 5,100 деца от целия свят. And we're looking at now a much bigger study of the relationship between working memory and attention. И сега разглеждаме едно много по-голямо изследване на връзката между работната памет и вниманието. And what we're seeing is that Worldwide, if you look at age, 10 years, to 30, children who have poor working memory have much more problem ignoring distractions on the Stroop test. We see a a, their, their response time is much slower. Some of you slowed down, didn't you? We all slowed down. But if you have poor working memory, isn't this fascinating? I mean, who would have thought, well, what? How could attention and working memory be related? So just having a poor working memory means a 10-year-old is much slower to respond in situations where there are distractions. Now let's just ask, are there distractions in the normal classroom? How many of you were distracted when she or he just walked in the room? Be honest, <laughs> a couple. How many of you weren't? Some of you didn't even notice. Okay. So, so this is just a relationship we're starting to understand much better. Това е едно взаимодействие, което започваме да разбираме много по-добре. And what the researchers are trying to do then is say, okay, if we take these 10-year-olds и какво казва изследването, ако вземем тези 10-годишни деца and we exercise working memory и упражняваме работата в памет и я подобрим, can we then, look at how flat this trajectory is. Вижте колко е плоска тази траектория. 
Can we improve ability to ignore distractions? Можем ли ние да подобрим способността за пренебрегване на разсеяване? So they can learn more effectively. Така че детето да се учи по ефективно. Now by the way, a sad thing happens to you. Ако нещо тъжно ви се случи, when you get to be in your 20s. Когато сте на 20, distractible again. Тогава отново ставате податливи на разсеяване. All right. But the whole goal of this Цялата цел на това. О, oh, didn't come on. See if I. Ah, okay. So the whole goal of this then is to look at can we train working memory? Цялата цел на това е да се види можем ли ние да тренираме работната памет. They divided these groups into two groups, the ones with with um with stroop effect and, and working memory issues that are more profound. Да разделят на две групи, едните с струп ефект и дълбоки проблеми с работна памет. And and where they are equal where you have both working memory and attentional problems. И там където имат и проблеми с работна памет. Can we move them up significantly with cognitive training? Можем ли да подобрим значително с когнитивен тренинг? That's where the research is going. На там отива изследването. Okay, let's look at dyslexia. How's our time? Нека да разгледаме дислексията. I think we're all right. What do we know about dyslexia? Какво ние знаем за дислексията? We used to think, мислехме си, I'll go way back. Аз ще се върна много назад. When I was first studying about dyslexia, когато аз за първи път учих за дислексията, we thought it was a visual problem. Мислехме, че това е зрителен проблем. We thought children reverse letters. Мислихме че децата разменят буквите. And we would give a test. There was a test called the Frostig. Давахме един тест. And they had to match triangles and rectangles and things. И там децата трябваше да напасват триъгълници, четириъгълници. And we give that test to see if the child might be dyslexic or if they might become dyslexic. Давахме този тест за да видим дали детето има дислексия или може да има дислексия. And then about 15 years later, и след около 15 години, we realized that there's a huge language and and auditory component to dyslexia. Ние осъзнахме че има огромен езиков и слухов компонент при дислексията. And at first people thought it was just a perceptual problem. В началото хората смятаха че това е просто проблем на възприятието. They can't hear the sounds. Детето не може да чуе звуците. Or they can't recognize letters. Или да разпознава буквите. But then they said, well no, they can't parse a word into sounds. Но след това се оказа че то не може да напасне думата към звука. And and that's a problem with phonological awareness. И това е проблем с фонологичното съзнание. And then и тогава because everything changes all the time. Понеже всичко се променя. I wake up in the morning and there's a brand new study. Събудиш се и е съвсем ново изследване. But then a researcher said Marian Wolf, Marian Wolf is the doctor. Said, no, it's yes. There's a problem with phonological awareness. Да, да, има проблем с фонологичното съзнание. But there's also a problem with naming quickly. Но също има проблем с наименоването бързо. And she called that a dual deficit hypothesis. И тя нарича това хипотеза на двойния дефицит. And guess what? И познайте. Now we know there are lots of things going on. Сега знаем че има много неща. So now we use the multi deficit approach. Сега ние използваме много дефицитния подход. Multi deficit means yes, there are perceptual problems. А това означава да, има проблеми на възприятието. Uh, often and there are also cognitive issues. Но също има и когнитивни проблеми. Ability to attend to letters способност да се обръща внимание на буквите ability to hold a word in mind да се удържа в съзнанието думата so working memory issues тоест са проблеми на работната памет how many of you students колко от вас read your textbooks and articles като студенти си четете учебниците и статиите you read the first page 
Четете първата страница. Makes no sense, by the way, but that's all right. You read the first page. Няма смисъл, обаче четете първата страница. And the second page. You go, I don't remember what this word is. So you go back to the first page. You read it again. You read it again. You go, oh, I think I get it. I think she was talking about that in class. And then you move forward to the next page. Then you go back to the first page. Why do you do that? Because it's It's hard. The language is hard. The words are new. The vocabulary. And so your working memory is being taxed. If I have a child who's sounding out slowly and with a lot of effort, ако аз имам дете, което различава звуците бавно с много усилие, it's like you reading a hard textbook. Това е все едно то, че те е един тежък труден учебник. It's too slow. Твърде бавно. It's too effortful. С твърде много усилие. And they can't remember it. И не може да помни. That's one component. Това е един компонент. Second component. Втори компонент. It's some of those long pathways in the brain are not maturing as quickly. Another component, друг компонент, is a might have a genetic mutation. Or a parent or a parent that had trouble learning to read. Който има проблем с ученето на четене. Yesterday I was up at the monastery. Spectacular place. My gosh, just beautiful. But I noticed that the monks were the only ones writing anything in 1850. And it reminded me That just 150 years ago, most of us didn't read. Most people didn't read. We aren't born to be able to read, necessarily. It's an invented skill. And it depends on other capacities. And, and I like to, to explain to people that I have terrible physical skills. I can't catch a ball. If you throw a ball at me, I do that. Did that my whole life. I had trouble learning to ride a bike. I still can't skip. But nobody put me in a special class. They said, oh, she's a girl. Okay. But if a child can't read, what do we do? We call it a problem. And the brain is different. But what we have to make sure is that we don't change their whole learning experience in a way that makes it actually worse for them. Maybe they don't like to be read too. So mom doesn't read to them anymore. He doesn't like to be read to, so I'll give him a, an iPhone and he'll love it. He'll think this is terrific. Maybe not such a good idea. So these four work together. Okay? The risk factors are yes, there are some genetic factors. Yes, there are Brain level differences, I'll show you those. There are perceptual and cognitive differences. And in many cases, there are envi environmental differences too. 
Because if the child isn't interested in books, ако детето не се интересува от книги, if they don't get a lot of exposure to books, ако не бива излагано на книги толкова много, or if we experiment with a therapy that no one has shown is efficacious for that child, или ако ние експериментираме с терапия, която не е доказано ефективна за това дете, actually interfere with the learning. Може всъщност да попречим на ученето. Just like in autism, they're looking for specific genes. Както при аутизма, тук се търсят конкретни гени. And they found that this particular gene и се открило, че този конкретен ген is associated with how thick this part of the human brain is. Just one part of the brain. Колко дебела е тази част от човешкия мозък, само една част от мозък. And it has a big name. И има голямо име. Superior temporal gyrus. Извивка, извивка, която е по-висша и темпорална. That's Latin. Okay. And it's Latin for the top. И temporal се отнася до bump. Top bump. Слушайте английски. Of that brain. Okay. All right. Now, why would that thickness matter? Защо тази дебелина има значение? Okay, you all know we have the cortex. Ние всички знаем, че имаме мозъчна кора. And the cortex is your cell bodies. И това са клетките на And dendrites. Тялото и разклоненият. Underneath the cortex. Под кортекса is all the white matter, all the long pathways. Okay? Most of the long pathways are like the big highways in Sofia. They were laid down years and years ago. They need new paving. They need to get thicker, wider. Трябва да станат по-дебели. Scares me to death to drive around here. So near. Okay. But they were laid down years ago. Но са били построени преди години. But the little streets, на малките улички, especially if you go out a ways, особено ако may be new, right? Вървите по тях, може да видите, че те са нови. And those are your dendrites. И това са вашите разклонени. So when I learn anything new, I get new dendrites. And those new dendrites attach to, attach to other axons elsewhere in the brain through the long fiber track. And those dendrites, as you get more and more of them, и тези разклонения, когато се увеличават, make the cortex thicker. Правят удебеляване на кортекс. So the thicker the cortex, тъй че колкото по-дебела е мозъчната кора, the more fingers I have to receive new information. Толкова повече пръсти аз имам, за да получа нова информация. That might be learning potential. Това може да е потенциал за учене. Or a measure of how much you've learned. Или мярка за това колко сте научили. So if a child starts out with an area of the brain that doesn't have as many dendrites, тъй че детето започва с област в мозъка, която няма толкова много разклонени. Learning is harder there. И тогава ученето е по-трудно. So they've been looking at lots of genetic factors. Тъй че биват разглеждани много генетични фактори. Some of them are inherited. Някои от тях са наследени. And some are seem to be mutations. А някои излезе че са мутации. Or related to experience. Или са свързани с опита през живота. Or related to other cognitive issues. Или са с други когнитивни проблеми. This is a wonderful article, public whole journal published two years ago. Това е чудесна статия, даже е цяло списание, публикувано преди две години. On the neuroscience of education, the whole journal issue is devoted to educational neuroscience. Това е върху невронуката на обучението, образованието. And one article in it, има една статия там, 
reviews for us all the brain level differences Която разглежда разликите в нивата на мозък that have been identified Които са били идентифицирани These areas of the brain Тези области от мозъка don't aren't as activated не са толкова активирани in children who are dyslexic при деца с дислексия Notice they're almost all in the left hemisphere. Забележете, че почти всички са в лявото полукълбо. With the exception of a small visual area in the right hemisphere. Изключение на една малка зрителна област в дясното полукълбо. Oh shoot. Ah, I thought. Okay. Try again. Okay. Now that's activation. Това е активация. Activation is just a measure of blood flow. Активацията е просто увеличаване на притока на кръвта. So we need more than an activation study because you can have blood going to a region that doesn't do anything. Нас ни трябва да изследваме повече от активацията, защото в една област може да тече кръв, която не притежава. So newer studies. Тъй че изследванията на невронауката. Uh, oh, sorry, this is cortical thickness. This is activation. Cortical thickness. And activation studies only tell us how many dendrites there are or whether blood is going to the area. But the newer research is saying, well, what makes these light up? Казва какво осветява тези области. What makes these regions of the cortex get thicker? Какво прави така, че тези области от кортекса да са по-дебели? And it turns out that it's how wide the streets are. И излиза, че зависи от това колко са широки улиците. Wider streets? По-широки улици? Can have more cars. Могат да поемат повече коли. And the cars can go faster. Колите могат да се движат по-бързо. And so when these fiber tracks are more mature, they get thicker. And when they get thicker, they can handle more traffic. And they get wrapped in myelin. And the myelin gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Myler, myelin is... Insulation. They get insulated. And when they're insulated, you have better pavement. Cars go faster. When the information is being processed in these fiber tracks more efficiently, you're more likely to get activation тогава е по-вероятно да има активация и мозъчната кора да се отдебелява все повече. Тъй, че това е причината или основния проблем. Не това, разбирате ли? The brain is ready to learn, it just isn't getting the information to learn. Мозъка е готов да учи, просто не получава информацията за учене. And then, what we can look at и след това какво можем да разгледаме? Ladies know this may be better than some of the men. What happens when you get older? What happens to your skin? Дамите сигурно знаят това по-добре. Какво става с възрастта, с кожата? You get some deep grooves. Вие получавате... We call those wrinkles. Нещо, което наричаме бръчки. And we don't like them, but actually they're not a bad thing at all. Не ни харесват, но те не са нищо лошо. But the wrinkle is a measure of how thick your skin is and how many skin cells you have. And as you age, your skin doesn't recuperate as well. So you have a lot of old, thick cells. And they also don't have as much elasticity. And you get grooves. Well, it turns out when the cortex gets thicker and thicker and thicker, it's the same thing. You get big grooves. And so one of the very newest measures in dyslexia is looking at these grooves. It's easier to do. It's easy to do. 
Лесно е да се направи. We've got technology. It doesn't involve putting somebody into all sorts of complicated cognitive states. It's a pretty simple measure, and we can see how mature the cortex is. We can see these parts of the brain, this temporal lobe, Можем да видим темпоралния лоб на тази част от мозъка. And the temporal parietal junction are not maturing as well. И как тези две части не съзряват толкова добре. So how do we build these areas? Как изграждаме тези области? Well, so far, there's research looking at this. До сега може да се каже, че има изследвания за това. And this is one of my colleagues. И това е един от моите колеги. In the U.S., his name is Bruce McCandless. В Штатите името му е Брус Макендлес. And he's just looking at how you teach reading. И той просто изследва това как се преподава учене. And what is shown? Четене. И какво излиза? Is that when you ask students to sound words out? Е че когато поискате от учениците да озвучават една дума. And when that's the focus of your reading instruction, you activate the left hemisphere. Here, 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 here. Now, that would help typical children. But children whose brains are developing differently, но децата са с различно развитие на мозъка, we might need some alternative approaches. Може да са нужни някои альтернативни подходи. So this is a neuroscience-based intervention. Това е интервенция основана на невронуката. That builds up the capacity to perceive sounds first. Която изгражда капацитета първо да се възприемат звуци. These are 35 children who are about 7 years of age who are reading typically. These are 35 7 year olds who are having trouble learning to read. And then this is those seven-year-olds after they've gone through exercises to build up their ability to perceive speech sounds. След като те са преминали през обучения за изграждане на тяхната способност да възприемат говорни звуци, да ги съдържат в ума and parse words into sounds. И да напасват думите с звуците. Окей? They did this for six weeks. And what you see now is these regions of the brain are activated. And what you see also, it's not what it's not the place that's activated as much. Because I want you to remember those fiber tracks. What we have is a big fiber track that runs like this. Called the arcuate fasciculus. I'm actually going to go back and show you. Oh, I'm so bad at this. Okay? So this is that fiber track. See the big red one? Okay. That fiber track links vision in the left hemisphere, especially recognition, it's called the visual word form area, and So the visual word form area with a part of the brain temporal parietal junction that enables you to link letter to sound 
and this part of the brain that allows you to sequence sounds in words която ви позволява да подреждате звуците в думи talk and read fluently. и да говорите и да четете свободно. Remember I told you about the dual deficit hypothesis? Uh, дали си спомняте когато ви казах за хипотезата на двойния дефицит? This is very important for phonological awareness. Това е много важно за фонологичното осъзнаване. This is very important for rapid auditory naming. А това е много важно за Why are those two related? It's all the same fiber track. Now, it's activated now. Does that mean they can read? It means they have the equipment to read a little better. But we still have to teach them to read. Reading is not something you acquire naturally. So they have to have direct instruction once they have the equipment ready. But when you have the equipment ready, then they can benefit тогава то може да се възползва from your instruction. От вашето обучение. Okay. So, part two. Втора част. We may not get, I don't know how far she's going to want me to go with this. Не знам колко да продължавам. It's a little slower when we when we're translating. С превода е по-бавно. Okay, so part two, what we're going to look at is how teachers and therapists change human brain. В част две ще разглеждаме как учителите и терапевтите променят човешкия мозък. How do we build up capacities that weren't there? Как ни изграждаме капацитети, които не са там? A number one. Първо, the human brain is an experience-dependent organ. Miro, who invited me to come here, is a basketball player. Could you play basketball as well as he does? No. Could you? Probably not. Could you? Could you? No. Why? What's the difference? Could you? Maybe. He's smiling. He's had years and years and years and years and years. Not that many years. Of playing basketball, practicing basketball, getting better and better and better at it. Okay. The human brain is an experience-dependent organ. The good news is you can be good at just about anything you want to. The bad news is if you didn't have experience when you were two and three and five and seven, you'd have to retire. You couldn't earn any money. You'd have to get some therapy, physical therapy. I would need physical therapy. And you'd have to practice all day, <laughs> all week, for years. And even then, I wouldn't be as good as he is. Right? But it is an experience-dependent organ, so all of you can learn a foreign language today if you, you can start if you want. All of you can do lots of things. The brain never stops changing. Now it's most plastic, the brain, during the early years of development. That's the setup period of the human brain. That's when the brain is, is figuring out what world you have been born into. Тогава мозъка се установява и той разбира в какъв свят вие сте родени. Were you born into a world where people speak Bulgarian? Дали сте в свят, където хората говорят български? If so, your brain's going to get really good at Bulgarian. Тогава мозъка ще ви е много добър по български. If you're born in Hong Kong? Ако сте родени в Хонг Конг? Speech sounds won't matter nearly as much. 
тогава звуците на речта няма да имат толкова голямо значение, отколкото промените на височината и мозъците трябва да That's why it's so flexible in the early years. Now, for the most part, a teacher takes you where you are now and builds new skills, but builds based on what you already can do. So if I went to a basketball coach, тъй, че ако аз отида при баскетболен треньор and the basketball coach saw me do this, и той ми каже да направя това, когато идва топката към мен, basketball coach would probably say, okay, first we've got to get you able to catch a ball. Ако ме види да правя така, първо ще кажа, че трябва да се науча да хващам топка. And once you can do that, и когато мога да го направя, I'll teach you how to throw a ball. Ще те науча да хвърляш топка. And then when you can do that, и когато можеш и това, ще те науча да тупкаш топка. И не си много координирана като тичаш. Тъй, че ще те сложим на пътеката. И ще видим след няколко години къде си. Какво прави терапевта? Терапевта казва, I think there's a reason you can't catch a ball well. Знаеш ли, има причина, поради която не можеш да хванеш добре топка. I think we need to work on your hand-eye coordination. Мисля, че трябва да работим върху координацията ръце-очи. I think we need to work on your visual processing speed. Също скоростта за визуална преработка. Because you've got to be able to to predict where that ball is going to be when it's coming at you so you can know when to reach out and get it and where to get it. Трябва да можеш да прогнозираш къде ще се окаже тази топка, за да се протегнеш там да я хванеш. And that's probably an occupational therapist. И най-вероятно тогава ще е нужно трудова терапия. A physical therapist will say, oh my gosh, физическия терапевт ще каже, your arms are so weak. Толкова сте слаби ръцете. I'm amazed you can even stand up. Аз се чуде как изобщо може да станеш. Трябва да отидеш в фитнес. Да си засилиш бедрата, ръцете. И да стане плосък стомаха. So therapists change brains through interventions that target and remediate underlying limitations. Тъй че терапевтите водят до промяна, когато се фокусират върху основни ограничения, които седят... They're both important, they work together. Те са важни и двете са важни и работят заедно. The therapist won't help me to be a good basketball player. To be a good basketball player, I'm going to have to learn to catch a ball, throw a ball. Терапевта не може да ме научи да съм добър баскетболист, за това трябва да се научи да хвана топка, но могат да ви помогат с изграждането на силата, скоростта и капацитета за преработка на визуални стимули, за да се възползвам от обучението. Те работят съвместно заедно. Как това се случва в мозъка? Как всичко това се случва в мозък? Първото нещо, което прави мозъка при едно дете, той изгражда капацитет. Това е животно, но нека за иллюстрация да представим, че е дете. Това малко животно. Трябва да му отворят черепа, да сложат там електроди, а пък повечето родители не разрешават това. Тъй, че това е мишка. На 16 дни. И мишката звуша звуча. Твит, твит, твит! Уф, уф! Мяу! And it's just in a little lab. The guy, the researcher, went to a zoo and recorded these animal sounds. But rats are deaf until they're 14 days old. So the rats had two days of listening. 
Now this is what we call a frequency band. Това, което наричаме е These are high notes. These are low notes. Това са високите ноти, а това са ниските ноти. And after two days, all of these cells, this is the primary auditory cortex. И след два дни всички тези клетки на този слух. The cells are there. Клетките са там. But they're not firing to sound. Обаче те не провеждат звук. They're going to have to learn to fire to sound. Те трябва да се научат да провеждат звук. And so they're learning. Те че те се учат. And at first a few of them are just learning. И първо само някои от тях се учат. And it's the middle sounds they're listening for. Това са средните звуци, които се чуват. But after just six more days, но само след около шест дни, almost the entire auditory cortex почти целият слухов кортекс has mapped itself for frequency. Вече има улавяне на честоти. This rat, този плъх, mouse, мишка, can tell the difference between може да различи мяу and вуф, вуф тези два звука. If you are a rat, that is very important. Ако вие сте плъх, това е много важно. Woof, woof isn't going to kill you. Meow will kill you. Okay. So it didn't take very long for the brain to map itself for sound. But there are a lot of cells here that aren't being used. And that brain would be very wasteful if we had neurons we weren't using. И тогава се губи много от този мозък, ако не използваме тези неврони. So from this age, тъй че от тази възраст, this is a little preschool rat, това е плъг в предучилище. To this age, до тази възраст, the brain is going to fine tune this map. Тогава мозъка ще прецизира тази карта. This rat, този плъг, will tell the difference between meow, ще направи разлика между мялкане и пюкане. И настройката ще е много по-финна и невроните ще реагират много по-ефективно. Между другото същите изследователи са могли да учат тези рати са могли да обучат тези плъхове с награди, храна, да различат тези два звука. Те са могли да възприемат речите. Тъй, че надяваме се да не ни подслушват. Така, че бъдето бъде 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 на бъде, тъй, че мозъка се изгражда въз основа на използване и капацитети. И става все по-добър в нещата, които правите. И все по-зле в нещата, които не правите. Езикът е нещо, в което ставаме по-добри с възрастта. Това част от вашия брейн, това темпоритна джункция, тази част от вашия мозък. Teachers, raise your hand. Учителите, дигнете ръка. Okay. Is bigger in teachers than any other profession. Е по-голяма при учителите, отколкото във всяка друга професия. По-дебела. Okay. In musicians. При музикантите. Professional musicians. Професионалните музиканти. This part of your brain. Тази част от мозъка. Is thicker than any other profession. Е по-дебела, отколкото във всяка друга професия. От всяка друга професия. But those are musicians who are constantly reading music. Но това са музиканти, които през цялото време разчитат музика. Musicians who use who read music throughout their careers. Музиканти, които разчитат музика през цялата си кариера. Don't show age-related decreases in memory skills. Не показват понижаване на памета с възрастта. So the brain just builds based on what we do: language, music, art. But lots of things interfere with that. Stress shorts out the cerebrum. 
скъсява сребро му. When you're in stress, or when a child is, или когато детето е стресиран, when they're anxious, когато е тревожно, when they're afraid, когато се страхува, when they are worried, когато се тревожи, their brain is trying to get them to fix that. Мозъка се опитва да му помогне да поправи това. So they're focusing on what we call fight or flight. Тъй че фокуса е върху борба или бягство. They can't focus on learning. Neither can you. If you have a fight with somebody really important in your life, you forget your car keys, you go to school without the assignment that you're supposed to have brought, you mess up on the test, Not because your brain is deficient, but it's doing something else. So all of these kinds of experiences affect the way our brain develops. Now this is really important and for those of you who are in school now and you're going to be working with parents and those of you who are therapists who are working with parents. When you are really working new brain regions or building brain regions or changing brain regions, You're tired. You're stymied. You're frustrated. It isn't fun. So if a child is doing something that's fun, angry birds, <laughs> we were talking about that yesterday, how much are they learning? You can measure it by what they're like after they finish. If they're like this, whoo, I just want to let angry birds, it wasn't too challenging. Students, what are you like after a full day of classes? She's showing me. If your professor does their job, this is you. Okay? So we can't expect this to be easy. It isn't going to be easy. Therapy isn't easy. Teaching isn't easy. There's a reason babies sleep many hours a day. Their brains are worn out. So how do therapists change the brain? They're architects. They're going to redesign it. So here's what a speech therapist does. I'm a speech therapist. Guess what you're horrible at? You don't understand verb tenses. <laughs> so we're going to work on that today. You're going to love it. Here we go. I am throwing the ball. Did you see? Did you see? You are catching the ball. <laughs> Now I threw the ball. You say it. Say what? Say you threw the ball. Good. We're going to try it again. I am rolling the ball. Do that for an hour. Two people are exhausted. <laughs> the therapist and the child. Because you are redesigning the brain. 
You're saying you're not good at this and this is what we're going to do. I'm going to spend an hour with you doing the one thing that's the hardest in the world for you. Then once I get it better, then I got to make the child be able to do it faster and more easily. So we have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing. Is practicing and practicing and practicing and practicing fun? No, there's a word for practicing and practicing and practicing. Students, what is it? Boring. So the kids will be a little bored. That's how the brain builds itself, is through repetition. And we have to get at underlying capacities. If we don't, If the child can't perceive what I'm saying, and I'm working on past tense, it's just not even getting in at all. So I have to know what the underlying capacities are, be able to identify them and strengthen them as well. This is where neuroscience comes in. This is where you as a therapist are essential. Neuroscience can, any technology can help practice. So technology offers a way to make practice easier. Neuroscience tells us what to work on. And this is your skill as a therapist. All three are important. We build new dendrites. We reorganize the brain. Students tell me, in someone born blind, What happens to this huge occipital lobe? What happens to all those neurons? The eyes connect to the occipital lobe and it builds visual skills. What happens to those cells, guys? Do they die? No. No. No, they're sensory cells. No, they're sensory cells. If your cell phone doesn't work, then what do you do? You say, can you hear me now? Nothing. So you say, I'm going to walk, I'm going to walk around, see if I get better reception. Do you know that's what the neurons do? If they're not getting things from vision, they say, okay, let's try the ears. Ако те не получават нищо от зрението, казват да пробваме ушите. And these children learn to hear. И тези деца се учат да слушат. With their occipital neurons. And to feel. С оксипиталния неврон. Оксипиталните неврони. So the brain completely reorganizes itself. Така че мозъка напълно да се преорганизира. The adage is, neurons abhor a vacuum. И истината е, че невроните мразят вакуума. If you're not using a neuron, ако не използвате един неврон, it will find something to do. Той ще намери нещо за правене. How many of you were told at some point на колко от вас някакъв момент ви е казано that we only use a small portion of our brain? Че ние използваме само малка част от мозъка. Wrong. Грешка. You're using every neuron, every single neuron, It may not be useful in a way that your professor might want it to be, but you're using it. And your neurons are constantly seeking out better ways to function. Okay? Reading changes the brain. Stanislas de Hen who's a Scandinavian, went to Brazil, and he looked at Brazilians who learned to read when they were young, literate Brazilians uh, that learned early, 
които са се учили по-рано. Literate uh, in Portuguese, but not necessarily Brazilian. Грамотни в португалски, но не задължително бразилски. Brazil, not Brazilian Portuguese. Literate in Brazilian, but learned later. Грамотни в бразилски, но са научили по-късно. Had some experience with reading Brazilian, but wasn't really a fluent reader. Had experience with Portuguese and illiterate. He controlled for intelligence. And he just looked at different brain capacities. And what he found was that reading boosts almost the entire left hemisphere. It, it also enhances the visual cortex. And you become a better listener. So children who read can also learn better in a lecture class. Now, this is a researcher that's become very, very important in the United States. Adam Ghazali. Because he's very concerned with the effects of attention disorders. Той много се занимава с ефекта върху разстройството върху вниманието и връзката с ученето. He says that enhancing human cognition, той казва, че ако се подобрява човешката когниция, тогава, т.е. ако станеш по-умен, това става не от колко преподаваме, it's building our learning capacity. Не от количеството на преподаването, а от изграждането на капацитета за учене. Making us hungry to learn. Тоест детето да е гладно за учене. Excited about learning. Да е развълнувано за учене. And us college professors a little bit addicted to learning. И ние като професори в университета сме пристрастени към ученето. Now to the cognitive capacities that you need to learn effectively, easily. Когнитивният капацитет за нуждата да се учи човек ефективно и лесно. Are good perceptual skills. Това са добри и перцептивни умения. Good attention. Внимание. Working memory. Работна памет. And processing speed. И скорост на обработката. We see these decline with aging. Виждаме, че с възрастта те се вълшават. How many of you have an elderly parent or grandparent? Колко от вас имат по-възрастен родител? Or some of you who are my age, <laughs> walk into a room and you can't remember for the life of you why you weren't in there. These can decline with aging, but they're essential for learning in the first place. You can build these. Aging adults, who exercise these skills, and there are there are programs out there, neuroscience programs that an aging adult can use. And by the way, I do one of these once a year for about a month. But they can improve and maintain these skills because the brain is an experience dependent organ. Но те могат да подобрят и да поддържат тези умения, защото мозъка зависи от опита. And we can also build them in children. Можем да ги изграждаме при децата. Where they're weak. Там където има слабост. And it makes learning much easier for them. И това много улеснява ученето. And it makes therapy move faster. И терапията се движи по-бързо. This is these are not cures of anything. Това не лекува нищо. They're capacity builders. Това изгражда капацитет. They're like building my strength. Те се едно изграждат силата. And my endurance. Does that make sense? И моята изгражливост. But they're not teaching me to play basketball. Но те не ме учат да играе баскетбол. I still need to learn to play the game. Аз е нужно да се науча да играе играта. Now how is it that therapists do this magical thing? Как терапевтите правят това вълшебно нещо? Well here's the Bible. Ето е Библията. The journal Neuron. 
came out with a wonderful article on how therapists and to some extent teachers too enhance the neurochemistry of the brain to enhance learning. The three, the, there are actually four neuromodulators, four chemicals that are upregulated very naturally when someone is learning. Okay, the first one is acetylcholine. As a teacher, I can increase acetylcholine just by establishing eye contact with somebody. Acetylcholine wakes you up. So I can go to the people sitting in the back who might have had a hard time staying awake for the last hour and you feel a little more aroused. Just a little more awake? Yeah, just because I established eye contact with you. How does uh, television increase acetylcholine? How does it get your attention? What happens during a commercial, an advertisement? It's louder? It's brighter? You say, why is the TV so loud now? <laughs> it's a commercial. Bright colors. That wakes you up, by the way. Yeah. And video games do this, by the way, too. So we never want children playing video games before bed. Ever. Okay. This particular module here this particular chemical is dopamine. Acetylcholine wakes you up. Makes you alert. Dopamine makes you, allows you to predict that you're going to have reward from what you're doing. So in that way, dopamine is the save button of your brain's computer. You will remember from today anything that was valuable to you. And if it isn't valuable, tonight, during REM sleep, you'll lose it. During deep sleep, anything that was valuable, you'll save. Okay, now I'm going to do something here. Look at these notes, you guys. Look at this. How, look at how thorough these notes are. Wow, what a good student. Now, she may not remember anything else from today, but she'll remember dopamine. Because I rewarded her. And her brain tonight in deep sleep will go, oh, dopamine. <laughs> Remember that. Okay, this one is called norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is a chemical that you get when something's new. New is like, wow, that's cool. What happens, ladies, when you get a new dress? Wow! <laughs> All right. Or you'll read a new science article and you love it. I had to go to her. <laughs> right? Or men, when you get a new car. Yay! Or when a new team wins that you don't expect. Isn't that fun in sports? Or when you're an American and you come to Bulgaria, and it's all new. I just loaded with acetylcholine. I mean, I mean norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is that wow factor. If you t take Ritalin, the drug is called methylphenidate. Hey, good for you. That increases 
норепинефрине. And so students learn more easily at first. It's like going, wow! Biology is cool! <laughs> Unfortunately though, if you get these things with drugs, your brain says, she's already getting it. And the brain stops producing it. So then you need a bigger dose. And then your brain produces even less. And then you need an even bigger dose. And that's why we have kids on attentional meds that every two years have to change the drug or get another drug. But when you do this as a therapist or a teacher, the brain is producing it. And the brain, these are These are drugs that are not, these are chemicals that the brain likes. And so you want to go back and do that same thing again. And so once you finish your undergraduate degree, you go back to school and get a graduate degree, and then you keep reading and reading and then you're like me. And you can't turn the dang thing off. But that's okay, I love to learn. Now this drug, this chemical, whoops, that I just messed up. Okay, this is serotonin. Serotonin balances how stimulated you are with how, I won't say I'll say relaxed you are. Keeps you in balance. It's out of balance in bipolar disorder. They switch from being overexcited to depressed. But you enhance serotonin levels as a teacher or a therapist when your students trust you, when they believe in you, when you make them feel like they matter, feeling safe is, is a is an enhancer of serotonin. These are the chemicals and well-designed neuroscience programs build in mechanisms, it's built into the software to keep these chemicals balanced. So when you're investigating software, when you're investigating high technology as an intervention, make sure that the neuroscientists have shown you and demonstrate that they do improve attentional skills, that you do get long-range retention, and that the child isn't too overstimulated or understimulated. Anyone can say, anyone can say, what I have today is brain-based. This is brain-based. This is brain-based. If you take this, you'll be smarter. Is that true? To a certain extent. If I'm hydrated, then I learn better than if I'm not hydrated. But is this a cure for anything in learning? No. So be careful. You have to be good consumers. So therapists then upregulate neuromodulators in everything we do. 
Тъй, че този вид терапия подсилва невромодулаторите във всичко, което правим. Eye contact, контакт с очите, touching, докосване, talking a little louder, говорене малко по-високо, being physically more active, физически активни, presenting information in new ways, представане на информация по нови начини, reinforcing appropriately, поощряване по подходящ начин. All of these are driving the brain to change effectively. Всички те помагат на мозъка да се променя ефективно. Repeat after me. Повтарайте след мен. I change brains. Аз променям мозъци. Thank you. Благодаря. Repeat after me. Повтарайте след мен. I should be paid more. Трябва да ми се плаща повече. If you're changing brains, we've got to let people know we're changing brains. Ако променяме мозъци, трябва да уведомим хората, че правим това. Okay, part three. How much farther do you want me to go? We are now at quarter of one. So we've done an hour and a half. Fifteen more minutes? Fifteen more minutes. Okay. Then we'll take questions. Okay. So... Again, neuro-based technologies we know can improve these skillets. I've gone through that. I won't spend too much more time with it. Говорих за това как могат да се подобрят тези умения чрез невронаука. If they're well designed, what they will target is working memory. Ако тази технология е добре създадена, ще се фокусира върху работната памет. If they're well designed, you should be able to see results in academic achievement. Трябва да могат да се видят резултати в академичните постижения. В професията. В законосъобразно поведение. И психологическото благополучие. Ако технологията казва, че чрез промяна на това, ще се промени еди какво си. Кажете, искам аз да видя академичните ви данни. Не искам да чуят просто един родител, който казва, че му е харесва. Искам да видя, че това върши работата, за която е създадено. И това е казано Outcome studies. И това се наричат изследвания за резултати. Окей. Let's just look at for a minute. I'm going to skip these slides. Да разгледаме. The importance of exercising, for example, processing speed. What do we know about processing speed? We've talked about working memory. We've talked about attention. Важността за това да упражняваме скоростта на обработка. There are neuroscience-based interventions that address processing speed. Let's just look a minute at why that would matter. I told you that when I went to the physical therapist because I wanted to be able to play basketball, actually I wanted to play tennis, I started with this thing. Okay? I know it's round. I know it's three-dimensional. I know it's solid. I know it can move. It's kind of fuzzy. I know the color. And I know I can't see through it. But the thing is, I can look at this for a long time because it's materialistic. It's sitting there. And because of that, I can hold it. I can practice doing things with it. And if I forget about it, I can come back and hold it again. But let's look at speech. Speech also has attributes. Също има характеристики. It is pitch. Той има височина. Hello! It has components to the sound. Има елементи на звука. We call that timber. Наричаме това тембър. If you're a musician, you know a flute. Ако сте музикан, ще знаете, че... As a different timber than a violin. Има различен термин от цигулка. Than a drum. От барабана. And it moves very, very fast. 
движи се много много бързо. How long speech therapist? How long is говорните терапевти? The typical consonant sound? Колко дълго звучи типичната съгласна? 40 milliseconds. 4 милисекунди. 40 thousands of a second. 40 хилядната от секундата. Okay? Very very fast. Много много бързо. I have to I can I need location is it on the left is it on the right is it in front of me Местоположението ми е нужно дали е от ляво или от дясно Как се движи звука And other components of it И други компоненти It's abstract Абстрактно е I can't hold it Не мога да го хвана I can't see it Да го видя And it's very fast И е много бързо And it's invisible е невидимо. So, let's start with an animal. Да видим животното. How does an animal learn to make sense out of this sound? It just do it, right. Okay. Ah. He's got to figure out is it a predator? Това хищник ли? Is it the wind? Вятъра ли? Is it a mate? Дали е партньор? Is it a lunch? How does he figure that out? How does the brain process sound? Okay, here's a sound wave. And it's being conducted from your middle ear here to the cochlea. Cochlea is attached to the auditory nerve. The auditory nerve carries it to your brain. How long does that take? Колко време отнема това? 1 милисекунд. Една милисекунда. Okay? Now, let's look at vision. Сега да погледнем зрението. We have vision in the retina. Визия в зрение в ретината. It is going to be conducted through the the optic nerve. Това се провежда през оптичния нерв. To the occipital cortex. Към оксипиталния cortex. How long does it take before we get an action potential in the brain? Колко време отнема това да се 40 милисекунди. 40 милисекунди. Vision is slower. Защото зрението е по-бавно. If I listened the way I see, ако аз слушах така както виждах, I would miss most consonants. Тогава щях да пропусна повечето съгласни. There are little neurons inside of your thalamus. Има малки неврони в таламуса. Okay, and you all, some of you, if you know your neurology, know the lateral and medial geniculate bodies. And they're going to send the information to the brain and they sort it. So the thalamus is a sorter. If sound is short, fast, we have these big giant neurons имаме тези огромни неврони. They're called magno neurons. Magno neurons. That fire extraordinarily rapidly. Които провеждат сигнали изключително бързо. The magno neurons in the thalamus, the auditory part of the thalamus, are firing every millisecond. Magno neuronite. Slightly less. В звуковият та област на таламуса. Then there are parvo neurons. Изключително бързо провеждат сигнали. Parvo neurons in the thalamus are much smaller. Има паро неврони в таламуса, които са много по-малки. And they fire much more slowly. И те много по-бавно провеждат сигнал. If I want to reach towards something like this that's just sitting on the table, I need hand-eye coordination of my parvo cells, slow cells. That allows me to move and grab. I know how big it is. I have time to think about that it's round. So I can grab it and I don't drop it. But if I'm going to hit a tennis ball that's flying across the, the, the net, I need magno cells to fire much faster. I apparently have very good parvo cells. 
Not real good magno cells for vision. But even that isn't as fast as speech. The point is then that some children just don't process information fast enough, especially auditory information. What that means is their, their neurons aren't firing fast enough to pick up consonants, especially short consonants. They perceive vowels. They perceive longer sounds, consonants, like a nasal. Mm. But they can't perceive p, t, k, t. Okay? It's too, too fast. What we can do for this is you can slow down the sound digitally, acoustically. I can't do it with my mouth. I want everybody to make up faster or slower. Okay, let's slow it down. It's silence. You can't slow it down. I can slow a vowel down. can't slow down a consonant like that. But you can digitalize it and, and lengthen that, that burst of noise and make it louder. And if the brain isn't able to process it, it can now process it. It's longer and louder. They call it glasses for the ears. And then you can shorten it and shorten it and shorten it and shorten it to train the brain to process faster and faster and faster. So when we look at the human brain, we can actually look at the waves that the we can actually use electrical stimulation to see how well the brain is duplicating the signal that's coming in. No, that doesn't work. Let's see what works. Nothing, I guess. I can't do it. But this is just da, and the brain is going da. And we can actually see that we can see the actual acoustic wave, we can Možem see the actual se brain wave. Audiologists who do a evoked cortical testing can actually see if the brain is duplicating the sound wave exactly or if it's distorting it. Remember what I said about identifying autism in newborns? What, what they found with the newborn screening, the duplication was fine. Now notice there is a little delay. Okay? But once it gets to the brain, that takes about a millisecond, then we, the, the wave matches what came in. This is what the cochlea is receiving. This is what the brain is doing. In autism, this little delay was here. So the brain wasn't even responding to the sound until much, much later. That's trainable. Okay. Now music, people will say, well, why can a child on the autism spectrum do well with music? And they can't process speech. It's both sound. It has frequency. What I'm looking at here is frequency. Do, re, mi, fa, so. I'm going to do whole notes. Do, re, mi, fa, so. How long is a whole note? It's called a whole note because it's usually a second long. How long is a half note? 
полунота. A half a second long. Половин секунда. How long is a quarter note? Четвърт нота. A quarter of a second long. Четвърт от секундата. Happy birthday to you. Those are all syllables put onto a quarter second note. Това всичко са срички, quarter second note is 250 milliseconds. Една четвърт от нотата, което е 250 How long is a consonant? Колко дълга е една съгласна? 40. If I have slow processing, I have no trouble with music. I love music often. Where I have trouble is speech. So, I can have a child come in and he's two and I'm evaluating him and I'm trying to see how's he responding to my speech. Hi, Billy! Hi! Happy birthday! You can just see their eyes open. You can see that you all of a sudden are getting in. Same time you can use their name, you can talk to them, and you can see it's going right over their head. So we have auditory processing programs that have been out there that are good for some things. There's an older one that took musical notes and songs and put them through a filter and, and children on the autism spectrum, because they like music and can process it, were able to handle that kind of sound and the program became helpful for desensitizing children who are hypersensitive to noise. And it will help if they're Hypersensitive to sound, it's going to be hard to do other kinds of auditory training for speech because they're going to shut it out. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. But we're taking the music program to the next level. So, again, that's where you become informed consumers. You, you say, what is, this, what is this technology doing? What can I expect from it? But if we go to high-tech neurology now, what we want is exercises that directly affect what we know the kids need, one of which is processing speed and prediction, perceptual skills for the perceptual task. If I want to improve speech sound discrimination, I have to work on speech sound discrimination. Okay? There's no other way around it. If I want to improve a child's working memory for sounds, called phonological working memory, does the program do that? Look, see. There's no magic in the brain. There's no magic. There's no, well, maybe if I skip and blow bubbles, I will get better at using grammar. No. How do you get better at using grammar? First you have to receive it, and then you have to use it. And work on it. Processing speed exercises are helpful in neuroscience because they build up the capacity to handle information efficiently, especially auditory. And it's helpful for aging adults. And I'll stop there. So, questions? Вопроси. Ha ha! I don't think so. Don't be shy. Не се притеснявайте.
All right, I'll ask you a question. Искам аз да ви задам един въпрос. If I'm building speech sound discrimination, let's say. Ако аз искам да изградя способност за различаване между звук и говор. Because the child can't process quickly. Да различа два звука. Звукова дискриминация да направи. Tell me what you think the research says about whether it would be helpful or not helpful to do speech sound discrimination exercises in a language other than Bulgarian. Какво казват изследвания? Дали ще помогне да се направят упражнения за звукова дискриминация в език различен от майчиния? What do you think? Какво мислите? It wouldn't be helpful? Дали ще помогне? Do we share any of the same sounds in English, let's say, or French or German? Yeah. So, if the design of the program is to build speech sound discrimination skills, ако програмата е създадена да изгражда умения за звукова дискриминация, the research suggests right now, anyway, изследванията показват сега, that not only is it just as helpful to learn speech sound in another Latin or Germanic language. Discrimination is discrimination. So I can tell the difference. I don't know Bulgarian. But there was just some new research published, and it's in your slides here if you get the handout. But just a couple of weeks ago, Saying just listening to another language, not being taught it, just listening to it. Actually prepares my brain to learn that language. So enhancing your ability to discriminate speech sounds is a cognitive skill that now if if I were to try and learn Mandarin Chinese, which is a tonal language, I would need to have training in tones, wouldn't I? But if it's a phonetic language, if it's especially the same root, the training actually is, is helpful. And there's one other advantage called the bilingual advantage. How many of you speak two languages? Pretty well. Okay. Do you know that you have better cognitive control skills than the rest of us in the room that speak one? It's actually beneficial to learn more languages. Why would that be? Because what you're saying, if you expose your brain to two languages, is what you're saying to your brain is, remember, the brain is an experience-dependent organ. Your brain's saying, whew, language must be important. I'm going to really get good at language. The heck with basketball. <laughs> so, so, what we want to always do is look at the research and also when we're looking at high technologies in terms of is it benefiting a capacity, a skill that's different than teaching. If I want someone to teach me Bulgarian, I want a good, fluent Bulgarian speaker to teach me. But if I want to improve my capacity to learn it quickly, I need to have exercises where I learn to perceive the sounds that I don't have in English. So we finally got a question. I like asking questions, but there is not enough time. I like time. From all this wonderful research, was 
atmosphere and identification. Was there an identification of the level of intelligence of the children that were in the tested and not in the controlled group? Yes. The Any good controlled study, and you can always look at this, всяко, when you look at research, you look at what they control for. Когато, they will uh, tell you. Какво so under the section in a research article that says subjects, Там, лица, you look at what did they control for. Те какво And in the case of that study, they did control for IQ. И тук те контролираха за Now, what it, level was uh, achieved? What was the level of the children before and after? Or? Are on intelligence? Yeah. They didn't measure intelligence. They measured language skills, or they measured Then speech sound discrimination skills, or they measured working memory skills. Or they, like the Stroop test study, they measured, and that was a, a test where they did control for intelligence, they had to. В струп теста те трябваше да контролират за интелигентност. Имате зависими и независими променливи. Интелигентността е независима променлива, за което те контролират. И след това конкретизират какво разглеждат. Защо го правят? That's what the design of the study is asked, the question the design is asking. So just to take your question a step further, in, in the DUEL study of working memory and attention, they wanted to see do attention and working memory work together? Another study was done a few years earlier at the University of Bern in Switzerland with adults like you and I looking at if I improve working memory ако се подобри работната памет, do I improve intelligence? That's a question you're asking. And she didn't look at IQ. She looked at something called G, which stands for general intelligence. Can I solve a problem, a new problem that I've never had before? Мога ли аз да разреша нова задача, която никога не съм имала преди? And she found that exercising working memory in adults significantly improves general intelligence. Now, there are two different studies. They have two different sets of dependent variables. Does that make sense? So what we need is that third study, don't we? <laughs> It says, okay, if I improve working memory and I improve attention, does that also improve general intelligence? So you're asking a very important question. When you said that there is a there is a significant improvement, with how many points is this improvement? In general intelligence? Yeah, that was general intelligence. That was You can ask me later. Um, let me just finish before everybody leaves, because I think you're ready. I'm a scientist. We ask questions and we look for answers. And as soon as we answer a question, guess what that leads to? The next question, which is what you're asking. So science doesn't solve problems. It helps us to know what questions to ask. But it also makes us wiser 
но ни прави по-мъдри. When we are teachers or therapists, because we can select our choices for interventions based on real science, not what we believe. Okay? If I base how I teach on what I believe on a philosophy of teaching, I might be right for one child and a disaster for another child. If I use science to guide me, I can be an informed consumer and user. I can start to individualize what I do based on what the child needs. Is it perfect? Do we know all the answers? We know more questions. I agree completely, but if we see it on a larger scale, because I'm into social sciences, what Uh, this does not help us uh, with uh, research that says that uh, more than 50% of the students don't understand what they're reading in school. Okay, so if I have a study that says 50% of the children are not, don't understand what they're reading. Okay, so what research am I going to look for? Тогава какво изследване да търся? I'm going to look for programs that demonstrate improvement in reading comprehension, aren't we? That's what I'm going to do. That are controlled, have a control group that doesn't use it, and that are independent. They're not done by the person who designed the program. That's where science comes in. Okay. Thank you. Благодаря ви.